Okay, so we know how to make phosphonium salts. Let's learn how to make these into something different. And that different thing is going to be phosphonium illids. Now, phosphonium illids, some people um, spell illid without the E. According to the American Chemical Society, it's supposed to have the E, but there's an, you'll see enough people leave off the E that, you know, there's no reason to be too legalistic about this. Uh, you're going to see alternate spellings out there, but most people spell it with the E as illid. Now, what do we do with these phosphonium salts? We're going to make them into phosphonium illids. So, here is a phosphonium salt, phosphonium bromide that we've made. And you'll notice there are these little hydrogens next to the R group. So we use some kind of primary halide to make our phosphonium bromide. And so we have these hydrogens next to our phosphorus plus. Well, if we treat these with a suitable base, this base can deprotonate the, one of those hydrogens. Whoops. And that forms a negative charge next to our phosphorus plus. In fact, that, that those protons are acidic or have, are weakly acidic because of the presence of this phosphorus plus. So this is a, in a sense a stabilized carbanion, stabilized by the neighboring phosphorus plus. In fact, some people will go so far as to say that this has resonance. And they'll put a double bond between the carbon and phosphorus. I probably, personally, I favor this resonance form, but a lot of people will certainly emphasize this, uh, this representation of the illit. So, um, what is the base? I'm being a little evasive on the base. Well, the, the identity of the base depends. If R is a regular alkyl group, for example, if we made our phosphonium from ethyl bromide, we're just going to have a simple methyl group next to these acidic hydrogens. In that case, we need to use a really strong base. I'm not talking sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a weak base compared to what I'm going to introduce. What we use is a base called butyl lithium. That's capital B, lowercase u. That is butyl lithium. Butyl lithium, we could draw the structure like that. I would probably draw it distinctly as an ion pair, just to highlight the fact that this is a carbanion. Carbanions are crazy basic. In fact, they're so reactive they can spontaneously catch fire and air, at least some of them can. So it's an incredibly strong base, and you need an incredibly strong base to deprotonate phosphonium salts of this type, where R is simply an alkyl group. But that it works. Labs will have bottles of butyl lithium around, and you bring out that butyl lithium when you have a really stubborn proton to remove. And as it turns out, this is an example of it, and we can make these uh, phosphonium illids no problem. Now, sometimes R will be an electron withdrawing group. So you can imagine if we instead used this as our bromide to make our phosphonium salt, we're going to get a different SN2 product. And now the hydrogens that we want to remove, they're not only next to this positive phosphorus, which is good for acidity, but they're also next to the carbonyl. So these are actually an alpha carbon as well. These are way more acidic. And we can use things like sodium hydroxide, much weaker bases, to do these deprotonations. So what, what the base you need to use depends on what, what the substitution is on the phosphonium salt. If you put electron drawing groups on there, acidity increases. If it's just an alkyl group, you got to bring out the big guns and bring in something like butyl lithium. But we can deprotonate these and make these phosphonium illids. These open up an entire branch of new chemistry, and we'll talk about in a later video.